three. Here. No, I'm not a writer. Okay. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Onyx here, going full nerd. And, you know, I, I don't know who needs to hear this. But this is, you know, like, like, uh, this is, this is a what the fuck moment. You know, Warner Brothers, you, you had to go and do it. I mean, you actually plan on releasing a director's cut of the Justice League movie. Mm hmm. Two, almost three years after the fact. So my question is, what have you done? What have you done? This is going to sound real bad to me, but, you know, I'm cool with it, but I plan on hitting you guys with some facts, all right? This is just facts. Well, maybe some of it's my opinion, but I'm going to call it facts. Everyone online claiming victory with tweets and statements like, we won, we did it, and people jumping on social media, bashing Josh Whedon and all that other good stuff. I'm here to break this down into perspective. Please don't make this out to be, uh, oh, Onyx doesn't like Zack Snyder. He was against the whole movement. Oh, no, don't, 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 don't take it as that. That's far from the truth. Okay. I'm a big fan of Zack Snyder. I mean, I liked 300. I liked Watchmen. But I'm still going to stick to my statements, which I feel hold true. Number one, this was all about money. Period. Number two, Warner Brothers has been mishandling the live action. Notice what I'm saying. Live action action DC comic book properties for years. Let me let me repeat that to you once more for years. Number 3, fan outcry really doesn't change these studio executive minds. But what I will tell you changes their mind and that's potential and actual money. And last but not least, this is still a big corporate mistake by Warner Brothers, in my humble opinion. Now think about this. Let's take it back to The Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman. These movies were out of character, but not out of possibility. As far as representation of two iconic superheroes. All right, Think about this. People will always, always look at Superman as the big blue boy scout. Okay. People will always look at Batman as the scary guy who doesn't kill. All right. As goofy as it sounds. Okay. It's inevitable. I could care less about how you rationalize a single story, but that's the truth. Now, these two movies were more of a shock because it wasn't what longtime fans were expecting. But that's cool. I mean, combined, these two movies pretty much made about $1.5 in box office receipts. Now, Warner Brothers executives were feeling the heat from the competition in the superhero genre because by the time Justice League was released, Disney and Marvel had built up storylines and had everyone anticipating the end of their run and already had not one, but two and a half you know, Civil War, I count that as Avengers 2.5, ensemble movies, each racking up a billion dollars in the box office in sales by themselves. Notice, I told you, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, $1.5 billion combined. Avengers? Avengers Age of Ultron? and Captain America Civil War each pulled over a billion. All right? Now, I don't attribute that to a whole lot, but let's go ahead. Let's talk Warner Brothers now. This is where they fucked up. Now, instead of standing by their director and pre-planned scripts, the Warner Brothers studio chief at the time, what was his name, Kevin Tishuhara, you know, he blew it 
on his handling of this shared superhero universe in the live action movies. You know, sure, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, heck, even Shazam were all quote unquote good movies. None of them did over a billion, you know, during their initial runs. I think it was Wonder Woman was probably probably close, but I have to double check my numbers. But they only did well after they realized they fucked up Justice League and they had to change direction. So, from my understanding, this is all rumor control. This is stuff I pick up from the trades online. I don't go to these little piddly websites, you know, like my own. But I go and look at, you know, the industry stuff. And from what I understand, bonuses were involved on getting this movie Justice League out on schedule. Now, here's where the shit song starts. Okay. Now, here you go. Instead of pushing back production, all right, you know, Zack Snyder had a tragedy in the family and you, you can't, you know, and it's his prerogative to step back and take some time for himself. Matter of fact, we expect that. But here goes the deal. Okay. Warner Brothers, trying to meet deadlines, trying to make money, okay, basically said, let's get another high-profile director who has had success in this genre, which we don't really care about this genre anyway. Because if Warner Brothers actually cared about this genre, you would have had this built-up universe years ago, okay? Let me say it one more time, years ago. The difference between DC Comics relation to Warner Brothers as far as Disney's relationship to Marvel is DC Comics has always been owned by Warner Brothers from the giddy giddy and they've always had all of their movie rights so truthfully they should be way ahead of the competition all right but here goes the deal they wanted to go ahead we said you know what let's get another high profile director who had success with this genre which we really don't care about i mean i'm adding that little part but that's the way it feels and you know we're gonna go ahead and put a couple extra bucks let him do what he has to do he's got a bunch of footage But we want this movie out by this time. And oh, by the way, we want to do some of the things that the competition did because we want to make a ton of money like they did. Well, in comes Josh Whedon doing what he was told with what he inherited. Then he added what they told him to do. So you think about it. Justice League made approximately roughly $657 million which basically doubled this production budget of about $300 million. But it still was unable to compete with its competition. Bottom line up front, it's not the director, it's not the actors, it's not anybody associated with that movie other than upper management got involved, fucked it up. Not Zach, not Josh, management and that is the case in most business failures unreasonable expectations not sticking with a plan and what I call scope creep which is the addition of elements not in the original plan all contributed to the fan based outcry think about that folks think about it now let's fast forward to today all right it has been announced Yes, they're going to drop anywhere between 20 to 30 million to complete a Zack Snyder cut, complete with the original planned music score, the original storyline that Zack envisioned, certain edits that were left out of the other one. But I think this is in hopes of accomplishing one thing, and that's boosting HBO Max subscriptions. Sorry. My opinion is, this is an obvious cash grab and not really trying to make those fans that had the outrage happy. Okay? Just a few weeks ago, they were making fun of the people talking about release the Snyder Cut on an animated Harley Quinn series. They were making fun of toxic fan, you know, toxic fans. Okay? And that's what they call them, toxic fans. All right. 
But I'm not going to crush any thoughts of fans having a voice. Hear me out. Okay. As a fan, you have been involved in the largest pitch meeting in history. Yes, yes, you have. Because Warner Brothers, outside of the television and animation, when it comes to DC Comics, has had myriad serious missteps when it comes to those properties. Okay? I'll be honest. My favorite DC hero had probably one of the biggest budget flops ever. Green Lantern. And that's because of what I say directorial errors dictated by Warner Brothers. It had CGI all over the place. The characters didn't feel like the characters from the comic book in the remote way. It didn't even make the character enjoyable in an Elseworlds or What If style story any kind of way. So think about it. This is all done to boost and get subscriptions to HBO Max. Because if you look, the average streaming service, when they make a series or a movie, the cost can be anywhere between 40 to 90 million. And that's starting from scratch. So this is a win-win budget-wise for Warner Brothers and the ability to produce content for a new streaming service. 20 to 30 million versus a brand new one for 40 to 90. Okay? This just gives them something people have been asking for that they don't have to spend a lot of money on and be like, we got you. All right? Why? Here it goes. Swamp Thing. I want to talk about Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing premiered on DC Universe, their first superhero streaming service produced by Warner Brothers. Swamp Thing was very good. It was canceled by the time the first episode finished. That right there, as a very good, very well written, very well shot, had an $85 million budget. And it was canceled after one episode. And then the original 13 episodes that they wanted to air and shoot was reduced to the 10 they finished because they wasn't, because they canceled it after showing the first one. And what did they go ahead and cite? It cost too much money. Hmm. So if 85 million costs too much money, it makes me wonder. Makes me kind of fear for this Green Lantern series they're talking about putting on HBO Max because Green Lantern should be taking a whole hell of a lot of CGI and that's going to cost some dough. Now they're talking about bringing Swamp Thing back, but I don't know if that's bringing new episodes or if they're going to show that original 10 episode run on HBO Max or DC Universe or wherever they're going to bring it to. Who knows? Okay. But. These are the things you got to think about, people. So here we go. Let's talk. The Snyder Cut is getting released, but it's not because of positive outcry from a determined director and passionate fans. But it makes financial sense. Let's boost HBO Max subscriptions, phase out DC Universe, get easy to produce content at low cost and max profit. So, there have been people referencing what happened with Sonic the Hedgehog getting reshoots because of fan outrage. But I'm going to be honest, that was probably a lot due to the negative reactions with the um, pre-screening of the movie to the target audiences. Okay? All movies get focus groups before shooting. Unless it was what I will now call, a lot of y'all call it the Justice League, but I'm going to call it Justice League The Rush Cut. Okay, because they released that hot mess with the assumption people were going to watch it because superhero films were popular. They wouldn't last long. They wanted to get the fans in there, ride that Avengers wave and thinking that we were going to watch anything. But now here we are. The Snyder Cut released. Well, hey, for the fans claiming victory, congrats. But I want you to know, and I'll see it for what it really was. You were used. Warner Brothers basically just hit you with the 
anti-life equation for my comic book people and for everybody that wants this Snyder Cut you better know what that is when it comes to dark side so basically what they did is they played on you and if you look it up online the anti-life equation is this loneliness plus alienation plus fear plus despair plus self-worth divided by mockery divided by condemnation divided by misunderstanding multiplied by guilt multiplied by shame, multiplied by failure, multiplied by judgment, where N equals Y, where Y equals hope, and N equals folly, love equals lies, life equals death, self equals dark side. And you didn't even know it. Crazy, huh? Hey, this is your boy Onyx at Going Full Nerd. Think about it. Tell me what you think, and we'll discuss this in another time. I think I'm going to try to get some people on with me because I really want to talk about this some more. Peace, y'all, and I'm out of here. This is the most, uh, for those who...